And we are back with uh, Kelsey Kulik. Um, so you've got your fantastic self-titled uh, debut album out now. Um, what was it like making that? It was amazing. You know, my producer, Oren Thornton, um, I kind of got involved with him through like, you know, a friend of a friend was like, hey, I think this guy would be able to produce your record really well. And, um, you know, I met him and I've worked with many producers over the span of my life. And I just knew that he was going to be the person that like he worked so well with me. Um, and, you know, I had a lot of creative control in the production of my sound. And it's just it was just an incredible experience because I remember the first song that we recorded was my song Roll With It. And um, that was a song that I wrote solely by myself. And I was like, I had that song in my back burner for about two years before we started recording. And I remember being so nervous because everybody loved that song. Whenever I played it out, people just loved it. And I was so nervous to produce it because I was like, oh man, like I hope it turns out as great as I want it to. And I remember when we first started recording it, all oh, that feeling hit me and I was like, yes, this is exactly how I wanted it to be recorded and produced. And, you know, I always tell people that this was the record that I've always, that I've been wanting to make since I was 16 years old. Uh, so you've got seven songs on the album. Um, yep. Do you have a personal favorite? I know it's tough. When I've spoken with other artists, it's 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 tough to choose which child is your favorite. Uh, one of my favorite ones to talk about is uh, my song, Damn You Love. And I wrote that with Phil Barton and Liz Rose. And Liz Rose had been on one of... Um, she'd been on my bucket list since I was 16 years old to write with. I remember I was driving with my mom uh, to go get my braces changed actually. And this Taylor Swift song came on the radio, um, Tim McGraw, the Taylor Swift song, mm -hmm. Tim McGraw. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I love this. And so I went and bought a record and listened to all these songs. And I kept on seeing the writer's credit as Liz Rose, you know, when I was able to get in a room with her, it was really cool. Uh, it was a really cool experience. And we've got a clip of Damn You Love, uh, which we're going to play a little part of right now. And then I want to talk to you a little bit more about it. Well, I've got scars to prove that you're no good for me. You never live up to who you're supposed to be. I run from you, but never fast enough. Damn you. So when I first listened to Damn You Love, I immediately thought of like 90s country music. Uh, your voice has a quality that lends itself to that. Um, Thank you. Do, you. do you admire any of those 90s country artists? Yeah, I definitely grew up. Obviously, I grew up a 90s country baby. And um, so, I mean, I love Shania Twain, Leanne Womack, Alison Krauss, the Dixie Chicks, Faith Hill, Martina McBride. I mean, all of those ladies uh that were Trisha Yearwood like all of them that were in the 90s country music scene and they absolutely helped mold the artist that I am today now you've been you've been been having this guitar weighing on your lap through this entire interview uh so I know that you've got something that you wanted to to share with us so uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that now what what song do you want to share with us today yeah, you know, actually, I'm going to do um, one of my songs off the record, uh, and I'm going to do, it's called Low Times and High Heels. Dress it up and make it fine, look easy, make a pair down. But what you don't see is all the breaking, all the hurt in my eyes. I'm barely breathing, barely getting by. Yes, statistics show that all alone looks better with a smile. So it's a low times in high heels, low times in high heels, make them tall to the skies the way I feel, if 
that's real These are all times in high heels Okay, this beauty, mama would say Hide your tears, do whatever it takes Make a pair down, honey, it's just heartbreak Well, I was never one for thinking twice Cause jumping in sure feels nice Always oh, kinda like the way a new thing shines How you think it's how I live Alone times in high I gotta be the only one who claps on this. <laughs> these these are those moments when I miss having a studio audience. Um, wow, that was just fantastic. Um, Thank you. I, I got my own private concert, although <laughs> although we'll now get to share it with 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 the world. So um, now you've recently gotten married, and and yes. I, I believe your husband and you you guys have basically been living your life on the road, right? Yes, we have. So ever since the pandemic hit. Um, so we were in Nashville, but um, then we decided to come back to Canada because we couldn't play any shows down in the States because of all the restrictions, right? So there was no way for us to make money, and we really couldn't afford to live down there with our with those opportunities being gone. And so we came back up to Canada. We built out a van, um, a Ford Transit van. Um, the inside's like a home. So we have a kitchen, a little studio area where actually my husband recorded his vocals for his brand new record. Um, we have a bed, um, we have a toilet, uh, and then we drive around. So we've done our, our van was done about a month and a half ago. And since then we've played 20 shows all across Canada. And, um, we're actually going to be coming back down to the States, um, in actually a couple of weeks and we're going to start playing shows down there and going across all of North America. And that's just such a nifty story of being able to drive in and then and, and just boom on top of your, you know, because basically you've made a tour van, but yeah. you've made, put the stage on top of the tour van. People can actually go and book, they can go follow us on social media at Love on the Road Official. So we have an Instagram and Facebook page, and then we also have a website where people can book shows at loveontheroad.ca. How has being married changed the type of lyrics you're currently writing? I'm the type of songwriter that I really have like a deep well of sadness to pull from. Like, I don't know what it is, but I'm always able to open that can of worms. Um, but I've definitely been writing a lot more happy love songs than I ever have in my whole entire life. So it's definitely changed. It's I'm more kind of leaning towards the happiness than the sadness, which is, you know, that's a good thing. Well, and on that note, um, we are going to uh, close the show out with Who I Was. Um and tell us a little bit about what that song you know, means, what it meant to you when you what you when you wrote it, and then uh, yeah. we'll close close the show out. Uh, but go, but go ahead, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so who I was, I wrote that song with Jeff Trot, and Jeff Trot is the producer, and uh, he writes songs with Cheryl Crow and produces her her as well. So he's you know written "Soak Up the Sun" and and uh, if it makes you happy and all these major hits. And so when I went into the room with Jeff, I really didn't know what I was gonna write about. I didn't have an idea, which is typically not like me because I always have ideas. 
Um, and so we walked into the room and, and I was like, you know, we just chatted for about an hour. And then all of a sudden I started like getting this little guitar riff and I started singing and we just wrote the song in like 45 minutes. And um, it was really an emotional song for me because I felt feel like throughout my life, I have definitely um, changed myself sometimes without really even meaning to for people to like me more or for someone to love me more. Um, and I think the main takeaway that I want people to get from this song is that you do not have to change who you are for anybody to love you because, you know, who you are makes you unique and special and that's what people should love about you. So that's the main takeaway I want people to get from who I was. And, and I really hope people um, really feel that when they listen to the lyrics. Now, the, the version that we are going to close the show out with um, is just, it's just you and a piano. Um, yeah. Where was that shot? Uh, so that was shot at the Meyer Horowitz Theater in Edmonton, Alberta. And um, it was actually for the Canadian Country Music Awards um, that I'm in this program called Sirius uh, XM top of the country. So it's with Sirius XM and they, um, have eight artists that are kind of like, um, it's, a, it's kind of like a competition and, uh, whoever wins, wins $25,000 and, and gets a bunch of exposure with Sirius XM. But that was shot for the Canadian country music awards that just happened a few weeks ago. So it was a really cool experience because I mean, we wrote that song on piano. So it was cool to be able to show everybody like really the organic version of how it was written and how it all came about. And I really think that 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 version shows the emotion and um, and exactly what I was trying to capture when we were writing the song. Well, that song, it, it's really, really beautiful. And after the break, uh, our audience, uh, they're going to be able to get to see it. Um, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kelsey Kulik. Thank you so much, David.